Hello everybody, um, I just wanted to show you guys one of these awesome games that I had in this Iowa. Um, this is a good example of how destroyers and battleships can work together and cover each other. Um, so as you can see here, my friend DJ is in his Fletcher. And pay close attention to this other Fletcher called Nuts. I know it's kind of funny, Nuts. Yes. Anyways. So as you can see here, I'm spawning on the top right corner, uh, the top middle corner, you could say, on Islands of Ice for domination, where there's three cap points. Now, a lot of people would say about battleships going towards islands, it's a bad idea, it's not recommended. Battleships are not meant to go by the southern islands of sea. That is one of the death places for battleships. Cruisers and destroyers only should be going by sea, because believe it or not, cruisers can do very well by sea. You just got to play it just right. And normally I would hang right behind this island, shoot this way, normally. And then after that, I'd pop up and slowly move up. If they would try to pop around here, I'd just pop some torpedoes and go. But this is to define what I was doing. So, right about here, Nut says we're going to run to B. I, DJ says no after. We're, he says actually before this chat, uh, we're going to actually go to A instead. So, we decide to go straight for A. Later, I want to show you when a cruiser comes in and how well cruisers actually this cruiser player actually backed us up. So, let's just slowly talk about the aisle, okay? It's a very, very good AA platform. Not like there is any carriers to be talking about. There's no carriers, but it's a very good AA player. I have for captain's perks, uh, manual fire control. Uh, Meyer for uh, Meyer fire can uh, fan, uh, Meyer manual fire control for AA. I have basic fire training, advanced fire training. I have also turret traverse, uh, which is expert marksman. Then after that, I also have a superintendent. As you can see, I have premium repair and premium. Uh, I also have the premium for uh, repairing the ship completely with its HP. Now, I don't go with really the spotter plane too much because I have great AA so and I have great range already as is. I just use the the plane that you see on the bottom, the attack fighter, just for the fact of breaking up the torp bombers. If so, not really need it, but if I go versus ever a Taiho or a Hakiryu, I will need it. So that's where it comes into play. Um, Iowa is a very big ship. It's very maneuverable. Its guns have better angles of shooting than the North Carolina. Not to say North Carolina is bad. North Carolina is still a very great ship. Uh, American battleships also. Just remember one factor. They are much more accurate at shooting full broadsides. Full salvos. You don't need to shoot individually. It can hurt your accuracy. These ships are meant to shoot full broadsides. Till the next accuracy buff that's coming, possibly to the Iowa, North Co, Iowa, and Montana in 5.6. So just remember this. So right here, as you can see, I'm popping behind the islands. DJ is going forwards, and so is this Fletcher. He's staying right next to me, somewhat, to see if he can spot any destroyers. DJ, he's moving up ahead. I am loading AP in case I see any cruisers. They are obviously loading HG. As you can see around the C location, C7, uh, there is a cruiser coming to help us out. I gotta give that man crest. While well, the rest of them bunch up all to the south. Don't know what they're doing. Uh, they seem to be liking what they're doing, so I let them be. Personally, I believe in pay taking uh, B and C. So most of the time, but because I spawned to the north, I said I'm not going to go to C because all the rest of my team is there, and I just let them be. Uh, they're completely showing broadsides. I don't know what they're doing down there, but it looks like they're getting piled up and into a giant ship accident. A ship pile up, literally. Um, he's just saying his basic concealment... And he's saying, "Don't for not for me to spot." Now, thank God I put up my spotter plane here. The reason why I put my spotter plane here is because I was spotted. And in case there was a destroyer right next to me, like 
you're just about to see where this Fletcher's possibly going to tort me. Where he's going to try to tort me. I spot that Fletcher with my spotter plate. That was the biggest deal right there. Was that Fletcher was spotted. Because that Fletcher was spotted, I can engage at ease. I see that North Coast Rounds coming in. I bank into them in order not to get a Citadel on me. Then this Fletcher comes in. If I remember correctly, he already had launched his torps. I fired two shell. I fired a full broadside, knock off 5,000 health. Uh, I did reload into back into a I did reload into HE initially. As you can see, my secondaries are opening up. Now his torps are coming in. Dodge them all. Thank you. See now this Fletcher is invisible, right? But I know he has his torpedoes that are already launched. I know that's already done. I see this Mogami, I'm like, oh, I need to help out my destroyers now. Because if I would have left them to be, uh, they would have been trouble. But I said, I need to take care of this destroyer first. I know he's going to be probably waiting in a smoke, so what I do was I just stay right there. He spots me, but guess what? I have my secondaries. And I let the secondaries finish them off really easily going. Um, I should have switched to AP right away. I think I may have forgotten, but that's okay. Um, see now you have these two destroyers here, right? We killed one destroyer, that's perfect. There's an enemy Fubuki on the opposite side. DJ's on low health. And we're sort of having a harder time. Now I noticed that only the cruiser. Now we've only noticed one cruiser, one destroyer, and killed the other destroyer. And I know the north goes on opposite side, so I know he's coming sooner or later. Switch to AP rounds to kill this Mogami. Um... I'm seeing a plane, a scout plane, so I know that scout plane has a certain rotation around the ship, so I know the North Co is probably around there. So I said, I want to have to try to kill this Mogami as quick as possible. Uh, try to aim. So now I'm still detected. DJ's just trying to survive with his torpedoes, and it's difficult because he's like on 100 and something healthy. He doesn't want to engage the Fubuki. Not the Fubuki's dead, excuse me. Yeah, the Fletcher just killed the Fubuki. So he got a I think he got a lucky torp off. Yeah, he got a lucky torp off because the enemy Fubuki uh, launched torps. I got five hits. Now I'm seeing an Amagi at a Northco. I'm going to get outgunned here. Now our Fletcher and our, uh, f our two Fletchers noticed that, oh, well, on the opposite side was where the destroyer's at. So that means there's nothing coming for us. Perfect. We have the opportunity to engage. Now, as you're going to see here, there's, there's going to be an Admiral Hipper next to me. He did a very good job of coming here. He was able to back me up instantly. As you can see, I'm taking a little pe uh, damage, a little bit by little. Uh, I'm trying to aim as well as I can towards that Amagi uh, on a retreating format while my guns start to turn around. So now my Fletcher, uh, this guy named Nuts, decides to turn in and pop a smoke. Well, <laughs> this helps a lot. Uh, this North Carolina is about to eat some torps, I believe he did. And, yeah, I believe he ate some torps. Now, I got a full... I got a full salvo, unfortunately. I, over sh I undershot him there. So now, I'm getting sort of shot at slowly but surely, but I'm in a retreating format. I'm choosing to go in a retreating format and not a forward position because... I want to get away from those guns slightly. I don't want them to be able to get so close to the point where they can penetrate me or get beside me. So I'm just slowly doing it. Now I said, oh, I'm looking at the Mogami. And I said, well, if my Fletchers cannot get hit by that Mogami, maybe we'd stand a better chance. I aim for the Amagi because he's more of a broadside. He presents a better target. Uh, it's much easier for me. So I don't know how I'm doing 4,500 damage. I expected to do more. DJ now is going to pop his smoke, and you're going to see a very, very good difference. Plus, that spotter plane is constantly spotting me. So, if I can knock him out of the sky, it would be easier. Uh, this Mogami decides to turn broadside to an Iowa, and that was the probably one of the worst choices he's probably ever made. But you don't really normally do that. I don't know how I got this little damage, but it's probably because I was turning in. And now the now DJ is just able to pepper this Mogami to death, basically. 
because the Mogami can't see him. As you can see, I'm not spotted by the smoke, but I can see them. So my Fletcher on the right, which is nuts, is spotting all the other ships. DJ popped the smoke, so that way I can't see him. This is a great play by the Destroyer players for me in very good manner. Um, I just took out this. Now I just took out the Mogami. Now we know we just have well the Amagi's dead as well because he took some torps. The um, Mogami's dead because he couldn't see me and he couldn't find the destroyers neither. And I have also an Admiral Hipper helping to shoot out as well. Now we have the Northco that's left. He's gonna go into a forward firing position and he's he's gonna be aiming at the Admiral Hipper because he's probably gonna want to take down one with him. He's not gonna take down an Iowa. So he's saying to himself, okay, let me take down, I don't know, a Admiral Hipper instead. So this is where it comes to play that's very kind of interesting. He tries to, um... Now he's trying to engage me on an angle where he can get me on a broadside. That's where I'm noticing it. And he's trying to switch between his, his broadside and engaging me forwards. So I've come to notice that, so I said, uh, I'll just try to get close to him then. Normally, you'd stick out long ranges, but, you know, since this is the end of the match. Now, this is where it gets really interesting. You saw DJ just popped off those torps, right, in such an angle where if the if he, the North Carolina doesn't move, he's probably going to eat a couple. So he has to move to the left, all right, to his left, to my right. He has to bank in order to dodge those torpedoes. So I noticed this immediately. I start to slow down. I could have moved forwards a little bit more, but I decided to turn. So now he turned. He ate one torpedo. Okay, I see his broadside. Perfect. Perfect shot. Couldn't ask for any better. Right underneath the... Right underneath the... Right where the citadel is. Right underneath those gun turrets. And I pop three into him. He's dead. Now we need to go for the rest of them. Uh... Looks like two of my guys towards the south did really well. But this is a great play on us. We were four ships, two destroyers, okay, versus... Uh, and uh, most, most of the time we were two destroyers and two battleships versus two destroyers at the start off. And maybe one cruiser, you could say. But this is to show that battleships can be on the advantage. We can move forward, but the destroyers have to be in front. Now... The cruiser wasn't back at me because he wanted me to do the damage absorption. This is the concept that I'm trying to show. Is that battleships should be... Uh, it should be, if you have a carrier in the game, the carrier should be scouting in front. If he has the opportunity. If not, it should be the destroyers in front. The gunboats, mainly. Behind those gunboats... Other than American gun... Uh, don't go with Russian... Uh, don't go with Russian destroyers. It's not necessary. Now we're going to see an Admiral Hipper here. Um, I see him coming in. I'm like, uh, he's at five kilometers. Yeah, he has torpedoes. I might get murked a little bit more. <coughs> so. Now, I slow down a little bit because I want to see where those torpedoes were coming into. I dodge them all. Great thing. 16,000. Knock him down by quite a bit. He's going for a second torpedo run. And I know this because th this is his only chance to actually get me. Instantly bank to the right, trying to dodge all the torps for as many as I can at least. Personally, he should have banked left and tried to take me with him, but he launched his torps right away. I said that's alright, you know. Uh, I took some torps, but at least I can get this Admiral Hipper now. So now I see an Otago to my right, I bank right, started banking, but as you can see here, I'm always on the front lines, I'm taking the damage, I'm taking the hits, I'm, I'm, now the destroyers don't want to be in front where the cruisers are, I understand that, but the cruiser's not going to engage a destroyer further away than the battleship, they're going to try to kill the battleship as quick as possible, because they know the battleship will rip them apart, it's just an initiative. To think how they how the cruisers are gonna work. So that's why the destroyers in back of me are staying in back where they are. Now what I'm trying to show is battleships can move up first. 
they can engage first. Now, not only are they the individual, but the destroyers helped a lot too. I will have to give them credit where it's due. And those smoke screens were absolutely amazing with that torpedo run showing, making the enemy show the broadside. The destroyers are meant, if they're forwards, try to make the enemy show their broadside. That's one of the most important factors. Okay? Then after that, your second job. Your first job is scouting. Make sure the enemy destroyers don't come near. Try to take them out as quickly as possible. Second job is to try either pop smoke for your friendlies. If you have a battleship as a friendly, perfect. Now, half the time, don't forget, I was not communicating with them. They were naturally, the destroyers were naturally playing this. Even DJ, which we have team speak with, was naturally doing what he was supposed to. Which I have to, do have to give him credit where it's due. Even Nuts, the guy who we're playing with, I know it's kind of funny his name, was naturally doing everything that he was supposed to. This is where you separate the good destroyers from the bad. Now, they were in back of me after they killed the two destroyers. That's understandable. And after they clarified the last one was somewhere else on the map or far away. It's understandable. The concept of the destroyers having to smoke screen make ships bank for the battleships or the cruisers to shoot them broadside. That's what the main job is for the destroyers. Destroyers, stop thinking that torping uh, from sideways, from long distances, you're going to get anything. Your job is to torp. No battleship's going to want to take a full salvo of torps over one salvo of battleships. They'd rather take the RNG factor of a battleship missing them than having a destroyer, uh, a destroyer missing them. So this is the concept of this. Destroyer players, try to, try to work with the battleships by moving forward. So, that's what I'm basically trying to get at. If you guys can understand. I'm sorry for taking up most of your time. I hope you enjoyed it a lot. This has been a lot of fun. Um...